everybody says I'm a girl that knows all the answers. The only trouble is, no one ever asked me the question. Well, that looks pretty good. Oh, it does, Beulah. It ought to. The prices they charge, and I didn't know whether to cook it or deposit it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alice, the way prices are, we've got to find some way to economize. All right, darling. Tell me where. Well, Tony asked for a raise last week. Now, that's ridiculous. You know what he does. Comes in once a week, mows the lawn, pulls a few weeds, and does a little watering. I don't know. It seems to take him quite a bit of time to get it done. Well, there's nothing to it. What well, a little bit of work between us. Besides, Tony's not a very good gardener. Well, maybe not. You know, my rose bush out in front was one of the prize exhibits at the show last year. And just look at the shape it's in now. Gosh, Dad, I wish you wouldn't get so riled up when you're reading. I was going to ask you for a dollar so I could go to the baseball game. You're usually in a pretty good mood after dinner. Oh, I am, am I? Usually. Well, the way everybody studies me around here, I feel like a cross between a case history and a trout. We all study you, Mr. Harry. Why? Because in our own way, each of us loves you. And because you bring home the money that keeps the family going. Well, I asked her. She told me. Oh, it isn't just that, dear. No, but that does have a great deal to do with it. Doesn't it? Uh, eat your string beans, Donnie. Doesn't it? Well, yes. No, why did I force you to say that? Do eat your dinner, Harry. Well, anyway, we can start cutting down by doing our own gardening. We can do it on Saturdays. I'll mow and take care of the trimming. Donnie can pull the weeds, and you can handle the watering. All right, dear, just as you say. Donnie, something tells me that your mother has just bought a new dress. No, she hasn't. How do you know? Well, I was with her when she didn't. I was with her when she didn't. I know what you mean, but it doesn't sound right. How can you be sure she didn't buy a new dress? Well, right after she bought the new hat, we came straight home. Oh. Put it back. What's the matter, baby? We got a new thing around here, economy. Huh? Times are getting tough and the folks are cutting down. They even decided to do their own gardening. They won't garden him. And they're going to do it on Saturday. Oh, that's tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Uh, baby, I don't think I'll be around tomorrow. Why not? Well, I got something else I have to do. Ducking out, huh? Oh, not exactly. Bill Jackson, you know what kind of animal deserts a sinking ship? Woman, I understand that remark. But let me point out one thing to you. What's that? We rats never swim unless we have to. And when we have to, Olympic team, look out. Hmm. Oh, hand me that little piece of pie there, baby. Mm. Better sit down, Don. You could be ready in a minute, honey. You know, Beulah, you're one of the nicest people I've ever met. What do you want now? One of the kindest, most obliging. You do anything for a friend. Out with it. Well, Ned Harris and Bluetooth Master are going on a hike. So? I have to do the weeding today. And your sly foxy roundabout little scheme was to flatter me, so I'd do the weeding for you. Sure would be nice to go on a hike on a day like this. All right, your sly foxy roundabout scheme works. You'll do it? Yes, I'll do it. Viola, you're a wonder. I sure wanted to go with you, fellas. By the way, I'll be lunch packed. When did I ever send you out on a hike without a lunch? Two pieces of cake? I'll fix the lunch. You just do the hiking. Beulah, you're wonderful. I'll give you half of any frogs I catch. Don't you bring any frogs in this house. And don't try to tell me like you did last week that a frog opened the front door, hopped all the way upstairs and into the bathroom by himself. Did I say that? What you didn't say, you implicated. You know, Beulah, I'm turning into the most terrible little liar. <laughs> Pesky thing. There's a place for everything in the world, but weeds haven't found theirs yet. Feature. Oh, there you are, Beulah. Yes, sir. Beulah, you'll never guess what just happened. What happened? Well, Mrs. Evans just phoned me, and she can't find anyone to take my place at the bridge luncheon. Uh-oh. 
Beulah. Be a darling and do the watering for me today. Well, I guess I can handle it, Miss Alice. Oh, you're wonderful. Be sure to give that rose bush a good soaking, because it's Mr. Harry's pride and joy. I'll take care of it. Good. See you later. Oh, Miss Alice. Yes? You look mighty smart in that new hat you have. Oh, well, thank you, Beulah. You certainly look sick. I wonder what's wrong with you. Where's Mrs. Henderson? She's supposed to be doing the watering. Oh, she had to go out. Out? Uh, they couldn't find a substitute. Oh, I was going to ask her to mow the lawn for me. Where's Donnie? He had to go out, too. Oh, gosh darn it. I've got a business date. An important one. That's bad. I can't miss it. Beulah... Would you be real oh, sweet? Oh, say no more, Mr. Hare. I'll move the lawn for you. Oh, Beulah, you're wonderful. Everybody keeps telling me I'm wonderful today. I wonder why. Bush, you certainly do look sick. You sure you can manage all right? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Hare. I can manage all right. Well, I'd better be running along. I'll see you later. You know, there's lots more business done on the golf course these days than in the offices. Well, you just go ahead and enjoy yourself, Miss Hare. I'll take care of everything. A lot more. How's it look? Move over a little so I can see. No, you better move over a lot so I can see. <laughs> oh, are you? Well, it's down on the left now. Well, maybe it is. Hey, I declare, I don't know what this world's coming to. A woman doing the gardening. You know, we women never should start smoking in public. Guess not. Next thing you know, we'll have the suffrage. Huh? We women will have the suffrage. We've had it for years. How's it look now? Well... I know, it's down on my right again. Well, it wouldn't be down on the right quite so much. It wasn't up on the left. Oreo, sometimes I wonder if you ever learned anything. Oh, sure. I learned a lot of things. I just don't retain them. <laughs> Clip of the moon. I know this bush must flinch every time that I cut into it. Well, maybe we got another pair of shears, and the two of us start clipping at once. Then it might come out even. I'm going to conquer this thing if I have to clip it all the way to China. What's that burning? McKay! Two bucks to Charlie, three bucks to Neil, and six to Ed. Oh, well, it's exercise. Whoa! Stop! Stop! Choke it! Choke it! What? The thing on the handle! Look out! I can't stop it! The thing on the handle! Why didn't you choke the motor? Choke it? If I could have reached it, I would have broke every bone in this body. <sighs> it's spoiled, but don't blame me. It was prepared by a field hand, not a cook. She has a right to be upset. Why did you have to make a bridge date on our gardening day? Did you have a good time on the golf course, dear? Well, don't turn it on me. I admit I'm shiftless and shirk my job. It runs in my blood. Beulah, I have a solution. From now on, on Saturday nights, we'll have cold cuts for dinner. Cold cuts? That's a good idea. Mr. Harry, 
I'll dig the yard if I have to. I'll lay a brick wall for you. But I'm not going to serve my family no cold cuts on Saturday night. No, honey, Bill went to the dance without me. Well, I call that downright mean of him. Oh, he asked me to go with him, but I just couldn't. I got a misery. Well, how did the hedge clipping come out? Oh, I finally got it even. The hedge was down so low, I run right over it with the lawnmower. <laughs> I just got to get rid of this gardening. It's not the work so much, it's the nerve strain. And Mr. Harry's pet rose looks so sickly. If it dies, it's going to be my fault. Well, don't work too hard, honey. I'm going to rest tomorrow, and I'm going to take it easy all week. And then when Saturday rolls around, I'll be all ready to ruin myself again. Bye. Bye. Bush, you look as bad as I feel. Beautiful. How's the baby this morning? Mmm. -hmm. Coffee sure smells good. Think yourself pretty smart, don't you? Well, I've just got the normal intelligence of a man of my type of brilliance. Make yourself mighty scarce when all the garden work is going on. And then come around here on Monday morning, all set to laugh up all the coffee and eat up all the pie in the house. Baby, you put things so blunt. Well, all the gardening work ain't done yet. I phoned the nurseryman this morning about our rose bush, and he said he couldn't tell what's wrong without seeing the leaves. So I was to cut off a branch and take it to him. Baby, I'll gladly cut off a branch for you. Well, we're not cutting any branches off of Mr. Harry's pet rose bush. We're going to dig the whole thing up and take it down there for a complete physical. The whole thing? With a lot of earth ball at the roots. Mm. Here, have a piece of pie. Huh? Fortify yourself. I know I'm going to have all this work to do. I'd ask for another piece of pie. If I know you, you'll make up for it in time. Take it easy. Now be careful. Be cautious. That's it. Be careful. Is Mr. Leafy here? Well, I reckon he just left. Well, he was going to tell me what's the hell in this rose bush. Well, he ought to be back in about a half hour. Why don't you just leave it? Well, I guess I will. Uh, Bill, you're not going to leave it in the wheelbarrow there. Somebody might bump into it, might keel over. Here, put it over here. No, no, I'll put it over there. I, I don't want to get mixed up with other plants. Well, you take good care of it, and we'll be back in a half an hour. Okay. Come on, Bill, let's go. Remember what you promised me. We'll be back with Beulah in just a minute. I like the petoniums. Are you Mr. Leafy? True. Well, uh, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with what? I've got a question I dare not ask. What's the matter? Uh, I had Mr. Hare's rose bush right there. That one was his? I sold it. Oh, no, do. Well, I don't know the customer's name, but the fella comes in fairly regular, and he always pays cash. Isn't that nice? It may be for you, but for us to panic is on. Oh, I don't think it's that serious. The fellow will probably be in again during the week with some more cash, and I'll get your rose bush back for you. And in the meantime, Mr. Hare will come home and see that hole where his pride and joy used to be, and I'll be in trouble deeper than the hole. I know what you mean. I haven't got another rose in the place. But we're expecting a shipment very soon. 
Wait a minute. I've got one rose bush out back, but it's been sold to the rich Mrs. Alamac, but I can let you borrow it for a day. Well, just as long as Mr. Harry don't find out. It, uh, well, the plant's a little bigger than yours was, but Mrs. Alamac is very rich. Well, maybe Mr. Harry won't notice the size of it. Okay, but be sure and bring it back tomorrow. Hey, Bud, give me a hand, will you? Okay. He usually doesn't work this late. I wonder when Mr. Harry's coming home. Bueller, stop worrying. He'll never know that it's a different bush. I sure hope not. Uh-oh, here he comes. Well. Well, well. Good evening, Bueller. Well, good evening, Mr. Harry. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, dear. Donnie. Not this year, Dad. You promised. Oh, I almost forgot. What for dinner, dear? Oh, well, we had a lot of meat left over from last night, so we're having stuffed peppers. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> wonderful. But you usually object when we have things like that. Nonsense. I love stuffed peppers. Lovely day, wasn't it? Yes, it was rather nice. Good growing weather. <clears throat> you know... Outside of the savings involved, I'm glad that we decided to get rid of Tony. You are? Mm-hmm. You see, it turns out that Beulah is a natural-born gardener. Why, well, that rose bush of mine is thriving. If I didn't know better, I'd swear that it had grown eight inches during the night. <coughs> what's, what's the matter, dear? Smoke in my throat. But you're not smoking. Oh, I'm not. Mr. Leafy, here's Miss Almack's rose bush. Where should we put it? Please, don't jostle it. The new shipment came in, but they're all big. As a matter of fact, there isn't one that isn't bigger than this one. Oh, I'll never get away with it twice. Can I take this one back? Mrs. Alamax, a very fussy customer, and I've got to deliver it today. You better take another. But if they're even bigger than this one was... Sorry, that's the best I can do. Well, I guess I'm in for it. Let's hope he doesn't notice. Although, of course, he will when it buds. The blossoms will be a different color. Oh, me... Just a minute, you're in luck. That's something I'm never in. No, you really are. There's the man that bought Mr. Henderson's rose. Well, 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 just the man I want to see. You do? Yes, sir, Mr. You know, I never did get your name. Benson, Thomas Benson. Well, Mr. Benson, you know that plan I sold you the other day? It was over in the sales section by mistake. It belongs to a customer. Well, give him another one in its place. Well, you don't understand. You see, this man's very fond of this particular rose. You know how it is when you get something in the ground for a couple of years and you work over it. It's almost like a little child. You know, a little tiny child opening its little tiny arms to the world. Now, listen. It took me an hour and a half to put that bush in, and it's perfect right where it is. But I... Why does everybody have to bother me with these things? I can't have my place dug up, but I've got the boss coming to dinner Saturday night. The maid quit this morning, and my wife is the worst cook in the world. But I... I came in here to get some liquid fertilizer, but I'll get it somewhere else. Well, I was just... Well, you heard him. What'd you say his name was? Thomas Benson. Well, Mr. Thomas Benson is one of the meanest men I ever heard of. Well, I did all I could, but there's just no poetry in the man. You'll just have to take one of the new roses, even though it does blossom the wrong color. Well, I'll pick a small one, Mr. Leafy. But they're all big. Well, pick one of the smallest, big ones you can find. Uh, pat the earth down good, Bill, so nobody will know that's been dug up. The more I look at that bush, the bigger it gets. Maybe we could trim it. Oh, it's no use. When the blooms come out, Mr. Harold know it ain't his. Oh, baby, you worry too much. And the lawn's going to be trimming again tomorrow. This lawn of ours grows up just like somebody was under it pushing it. Grass looks kind of nice, though. Not to us gardeners. Well... Nice day, dear? Fine, fine. Did you notice anything different around here? That's not a new dress. No. Oh, what is it then? Oh, nothing. Oh, by the way, did you make any plans for us tonight? No, we're staying home this evening. Good. I'm going to try my hand at writing an article for the Horticultural Journal. Now, you may not believe this, but my rose bush has grown five inches in one day. <coughs> I measured it this morning before I left. <coughs> Hello? 
Is this Mrs. Thomas Benson? Well, this is Beulah, Mrs. Alice Henderson's housekeeper. I wanted to talk to you about a rose bush. Uh, I talked with your husband, Mr. Benson, but he didn't seem to understand, so I was just wondering if I could... Uh... Have a nice game, dear? Oh, so-so. How much did you lose? Well, Ed won two dollars from me. Oh, and Charlie? What well, difference does it make? Oh, just wondering. Uh, Charlie sank a pot he'd never sink again in a hundred years. He got four dollars. And Neil? Neil won eight. How was the bridge game? Lost a dollar eighty. Well, some days are like that. What was that? Beat you. Give on more. Bula, do I smell a turkey cooking? Yes, um. Oh, it's beautiful. And lemon meringue pie. And creamed onions and fresh peas. I don't remember ordering all those things. Oh, you didn't. I got Bill to get them for me. Oh. Bula, with all your gardening, how did you ever manage? Well, when you have to do a thing, you just do it. Turkey. Bula, how'd you ever manage? Oh, I just did. I'm starved to death. Are there any crackers? Oh, hello, Donnie. How was today's hike? We had a rotten hike. A bee stung me, I stepped in a mud puddle with my shoes on, and Bluetooth caught all the frogs. Hey, Dad! Look what we have for supper! Turkey! Dad, you hungry? Donnie, I've never been so hungry in my life. Me neither. Oh, what time's dinner, dear? About a half an hour. I can hardly wait. Well, what do you got there, Bill? Uh, just a turkey, Mr. Harry. All turkey? Well, where are you going with it? I'm afraid you're going to have to let Beulah explain that, Mr. Harry. Well, Beulah? No. Uh, well, you see, I made a deal with the Bensons and swapped them a fully cooked dinner so I can get your rose bush back. My rose bush? What is this all about? I can explain about that later, dear. Bill, what about our dinner? Uh, what? Well, I'll, I'll have to hurry right on, and your, your dinner's right on the table there, Miss Alice. I'll be right back. Now, Alice, I demand an explanation for all this. Oh, it's a long story, dear. You'd better sit down. Hmm? So, Bill felt she just had to get your bush back for you. Mm cold cuts. Well, honey, it was your original idea. I thought you liked cold cuts. I do, but not when I'm all set for turkey. Well, have some salami. You know, an idea has just occurred to me. Yes. Let's take Tony back and pay him that raise he wanted. Yippee! Oh, John, that's the best idea you've had for a long time. Mm. Oh, but how can I eat this stuff when I still smell turkey? Alice, why should I still smell turkey? I don't know. But so do I. Well, Beulah, you're back already. Yes, um, did you eat your dinner? Oh, I couldn't eat those cold cuts after I saw that turkey. Beulah, I think you did this on purpose, just to teach us a lesson. Well, Beulah, why is it I still smell turkey? Oh, I almost forgot. I cooked two of them. I told you I wasn't going to feed my family cold cuts on Saturday night. <laughs> 